Hey guys, Dr. Maida here. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the application process for residency for all you fourth year medical students who are applying to residency programs right now. And the way we're gonna break it down is the application mainly consists of your hobbies, your activities, your step one scores, your letters of recommendation, your personal statement, a lot of other miscellaneous things that I can't think about right now. First off, for those of you new to my channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna break down this video by talking about the application for residency, right? So you have your step one scores, you have your clinical rotations and whether you've honored those rotations, your letters of recommendation, the interview process, and your activities and publications. So first off, whether you're applying to anesthesia, emergency medicine, surgery, internal medicine, psychiatry, dermatology, most programs are gonna review your application in a similar way. After being on the admissions committee at my med school and reviewing a lot of applications and being on the admissions committee here at my residency program, I'm gonna help give you guys some insider advice on what to focus on to bolster your applications and improve your chances to rank higher at your desired program. So as many of you know, the first cutoff in regards to these applications mainly has to do with your scores. And that's usually your step one score and your step two score, your COMLEX one and your COMLEX two. So let's say for example that you're applying to anesthesia and the average for anesthesia right now is around a 230 plus or minus a couple of points. So let's say you have a 230 and you applied to the program, that's gonna be the first cutoff that you're gonna have to meet to obtain the interview. And that's the goal, is to obtain the interview. That's the first step that you should focus on. Now there's gonna be some applicants who don't have that minimum score to reach the cutoff. And that's not always the end of the world. A lot of times, if you go to school in the same state, or if you make an interest in the program or express interest in the program, and you show that you wanna stay in the same state, you wanna stay in the same state to practice later on, that might give you the extra edge you need to obtain the interview. Some other ways you can obtain the interview if you have not met the minimum requirement is just reach out to the program. You can make a phone call, to the program coordinator and just ask them what you can do to obtain an interview. There's a lot of cancellations. There's a lot of interviews being moved around in regards to dates. So it's not always the end of the world if you didn't get the interview right away. Just maintain persistence and keep trying. Now every program is gonna rank you based off of a few categories. So the first thing is your step scores. The second thing is gonna be your clinical rotations and whether you've honored those rotations. The third thing might be letters of recommendation. The fourth thing is gonna be the interview and how well you did on the interview. And the fifth thing may include your publications and activities and volunteer work. Now with these five categories, it can be a checkbox system, right? So did this person meet our requirement? Yes, in regards to the step score. Did this person honor most of their rotations or did they honor a decent amount of rotations? Yes, they did. Did this person have excellent letters of recommendation? Yes, they did. Did this person do superb on our interview? Do they have publications in regards to research and how strong are their activities? And that also might be a yes. So a lot of times programs might use a checkbox system to see if you've fulfilled those requirements and incorporate that into the decision in regards to where they're gonna rank you. Other programs may split that up even further and give you a certain amount of points in regards to each category. For instance, your step score. If you've met the minimum for, let's say, anesthesia and you got a 230, then they might give you a one out of two for that. But if you got a 250, you might get two out of two points. If you've honored a lot of your rotations, you might get an extra point for that. And if you haven't honored your rotations, they may not give you any points for that. If you did an excellent job on your interview, they might grade that, oh, I don't know, out of three points, and they might give you a three out of three, or they might give you a two out of three if you did a pretty good job. And if your letters of recommendation were excellent, you might get an extra point for that. And so all those points can be added up and used towards ranking you for the rank list. Now, every program is gonna have a different methodology of how they rank you, right? It's not always gonna work like this. But overall, if you focus on those five categories and you go into it knowing that this is what you have to focus on, 
you're gonna improve your chances on moving up in that rank list. Now in the past, there were pre-interview dinners and there were interviews as well. And during the pre-interview dinner, a lot of times you're gonna meet residents, you're gonna be with other applicants. And I'll let you know that the residents are a lot of times watching you, they're trying to see your behavior because essentially, you're gonna have to work with them for the next three to seven years, depending on what residency you do. And they wanna work with someone that's easy to work with, someone that's not difficult. So during that pre-interview dinner, it essentially is also an interview and a lot of times faculty will ask input from the residents or the chief residents on what they thought of that applicant. Now don't downplay the pre-interview dinner, make sure you get there on time. And same thing with the interview, express interest, make sure that you know what's going on in your application, if you have research, if you have activities, make sure you know what you did because it always looks funny if someone's not able to answer questions about their application. Now because a lot of these interviews are gonna be on Zoom. I can put up another video on tips and tricks in regards to Zoom interviews and how to help yourself stand out on Zoom interviews to get you higher on that rank list. And because of these Zoom interviews, there may not be a pre-interview dinner. They may not be any traveling at all. So that might be a curveball that a lot of you are gonna to have to deal with this year. If you guys would like to see a video on tips and tricks for Zoom interviews, go ahead and drop a comment and we'll go ahead and drop that video for you guys. So overall, the most important important part of your application process, of course, is getting an interview and acing that interview and then showing interest throughout the whole process is just going to get you higher on that rank list. And some miscellaneous things that may work to your advantage are whether you're from the same state, if you're expressing interest in practicing in that state later on, if you have family in that state. These are all extra points that you can discuss and bring up on your interview that will earn you some more points with the faculty and the resident. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys benefited from it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.